Hello everyone, this is Pavan and I have with me Chinmay Hey. Uh, in this video, we will be showing how to configure uh, test load balancer on a Java project which uses AND for building and JUnit for tests. Uh, because this video is going to be very heavy on uh, text on the screen, we recommend using 720 uh, pics on uh, YouTube. Uh, that way you can see the text very clearly. Okay, so <coughs> uh, back to the showcase. Uh, for this, for the purpose of uh, showing how to do this, we have a sample project with us. Uh, in, in front of you, you see the layout of uh, what the Java project looks like. There's an SRC directory, which has a bunch of Java classes and resources, uh, like the log4j properties that you see. There's a test directory, which has test files for the corresponding Java classes. There's a lib directory, which has a bunch of jars, which are the uh, library jars for this project. And finally, there is a build.xml, which is the AND file for this uh, project. Now, let us look at what are, are the targets that are available on this uh, AND file. Uh, looks like there is something called test. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, execute that, see what it does. And we can also look at what the target definition looks like. So, there you go. Uh, the target uh, seems to depend on compile and compile test, which makes sense. We want to compile things before running the test. And the target itself calls out to JUnit uh, task. And the way JUnit task works is by getting a list of uh, tests that we want to execute. And that is done using the file set, uh, where the pattern that we want to execute is any class which ends with the, the name test. Uh, we want to consider that as a test and execute that. Okay, so let's see what happened to our uh, sample run. Oh, uh, just in time. So the build was successful and it took about uh, 33 seconds to execute. Right. So since this project is a demo project, uh, there are not uh, that many tests to execute and hence the build finished really fast. But uh, you can easily imagine on a large Java project which, uh, with a lot of integration tests and whatnot, uh, a build would take anywhere from 10 minutes to one hour. And that is exactly uh, the case where you want to paralyze your test suite and uh, which is why you would want to use test load balancer. Uh, in order to see how TLB itself is configured on your build, uh, Genmejay would run you through the process. All right, so here we have a link to test load balancer. Uh, let's jump right in. We head to the test load balancer website. We have a download link, head into it. Uh, we see a TLB-Java archive. This is an archive of TLB Java libraries that are necessary for test load balancing on Java. There's another archive called tlb-server. This acts as a data store for TLB to store its data on. And it's used across runs to, uh, to uh, partition your tests appropriately. So uh, let's, let's just unarchive the, the downloads we just made. We are gonna copy them to a temp location. I'm gonna copy the Java library and the server and let's uncompress them one by one tlb java all right so you see a bunch of java jars in there uh, and these are tlb dependencies these are things that tlb itself depends on uh, i'm going to copy all these libraries to our project uh, so tl all right so sample projects is the is root of root of our project and junit is a project name lib is the libraries directory. We are also going to copy the TLB Java jar itself. What we just copied were the dependencies. And here we go. All right. So we have copied all the libraries. Uh, let's go back to the agenda. So this one's done. All right. We are supposed to head to the documentation. So let's go into the documentation page. You can see here that there's a quick start link. Let's get right in. Uh, all right, what does it have? Here we have a JUnit on Ant example. It's a, it's actually an Ant built fragment. Let's copy it to a temporary location so we can compare it with the, with the regular build task we have got. So let's just copy our build task to the same place for comparison. All right, I see a few differences. There's a, a type definition for load balance file set. Let me borrow that. Uh, a minor change, which is the class path being used here is called load balance class path. We don't call it that in our project. We call it test class path. And the other two changes are we have, we're using this custom file set in, in this case for the load balance task. 
and we are also using a custom formatter which is JUnit data recorder which uh, which is responsible for pushing data back to the TLB server so TLB server knows uh, what were the test times taken and all of that and can do a good job of balancing. We can't call both the targets test so let's call it test.balanced. Alright, so the aim, so the the primary thing that this task does is 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 really allows you to allows TLB to hook up at a point where your build tool has selected the files that need to be run and it allows TLB to partition these files so that it can run different instances, different test cases across two different partitions. So that's the role of this task. You can read more on the documentation. All right, so let's go back to our agenda, see where we are. Okay, so we have done the TLB documentation step. We have already copied the build snippet. Let's start the TLB server now. All right, we are in the right place. Let's just drop into the TLB server download. This is the archive uh, that I just uncompressed. So I'm going to use a script called server.sh and I'm going to ask it to start the server. It says server started and demonized. All right, we are good to go. So this one's done. We need to set a bunch of environment variables and then execute our task so that TLB can balance it for us. So let's split our terminal into two parts. Uh, let's just CD into the right project here as well. So go into sample projects and JUnit. All right, here we go. So let's paste the command that we got from there. Let's paste it in other place as well. On the left hand side, the the half that we got on the left hand side is going to run the first partition. The, the other half is going to run the second partition. We are going to make two partitions of this test suite. And we're going to execute them simultaneously and you'll see that different set of tests run on these partitions. All right, so here we go. So this one is running the first set of tests and the the partition that you see on the right hand side, this partition is running the second set of tests. So let's see how this one goes. You can see that the tests being run on left hand side are different from the tests being run on the right hand side. There are no repetitions, no tests missed out. That's what TLB guarantees. So we wait for this build to finish. All right. So it seems the first partition finished in about 21 seconds and the second partition finished in about 17 seconds. That's good, but that's not ideal. We would like it to do a better job, but TLB now has has the data from last time. This, this data is gonna allow TLB to do a, a, a better partitioning if we invoke it again, right? So let's just invoke it again with uh, the different job versions. So you can read the details of TLB job name and job version and other environment variables that you see here on the documentation page. We have really good detailed documentation on all this. So uh, since this is a different run, I'm gonna use a different job version. But the job name is the same because it's, a, it's running off of the same project and it's running the same set of tests. So I'm going to execute these two again. Let's see if it does a better job this time. So uh, yeah, so you can again see that uh, the rest being run across these two partitions, left hand side, right hand side are different. They're not being repeated uh, and, and no tests are going to be missed out. So all right, so both the partitions finish in 19 seconds. This is perfect. So this is, this is, TLB at its best. It's partitioning uh, very, very accurately. That's good. So whatever we have shown you here in this in this video is also available as a download. You can actually download this archive and try it out. So I'm going to the documentation. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to the download section again. So here you can see an uh, see an archive called setup hyphen example hyphen version number dot tar dot gz. You can just download this archive, uncompress it. What you're gonna get is an examples directory. You can step into that directory and then step into ant underscore j unit, the directory that you can see right here. So uh, example slash ant j unit, and you're gonna find uh, a file called run balance.sh. Here you can see the file called run balance.sh. You can just execute this, this one file locally. It's, it's gonna print out the lifecycle events for you and it's gonna run two partitions one after another serially, which will demonstrate the effect of partitioning to you locally. So with this, I'm gonna hand it over to Pawan who's gonna talk about how to set up TLB on a build or CI server. Uh, as you just saw in the demo, uh, you can, uh, TLB doesn't require a build server to run. You can pretty much run uh, TLB enabled builds on any machine. 
uh, as you saw uh, in uh, JS demo, you can actually use uh, uh, two uh, the splits on the on the same shell and start executing things in parallel. But uh, typically, if you have a build server, uh, especially uh, more, one of the more popular ones like Hudson or Go or Team City, which have parallel execution capabilities built in and which can orchestrate these uh, uh, parallel builds for you, you would want to leverage that. Uh, and uh, 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 you start running things in parallel uh, on these build servers. Uh, uh, where, because it is a little more elaborate, uh, we would want to do that in the next session of the next series of the videos. Please continue watching this space for uh, uh, more on how to configure TLB enabled builds on uh, uh, your build server like Hudson Go or Team City. Uh, until then, happy hacking.